Skillshare is a great place to learn new skills and pursue the work you love. We're going to talk about concept smartphones, which is a bit of a rare topic. These are phones that are either created for the purposes of entertainment or made by companies as a promise to consumers of what the future might hold. And in a lot of ways, these are even more exciting than the phones that end up being released. They aren't bounded by the same realities of having to mass produce, to reduce costs and to make profit. And instead, these are the creators' visions of what could be one day possible. So let's get right into it. We're going to start with a couple that I found pretty hilarious. Because as you guessed, when you let people's imaginations run wild, the results aren't always fantastic. First up was the triple display Android phone. Similar in a lot of ways to the ZTE Axon M that was recently released, but instead of two displays, we've now got three. Which sounds kind of okay until you try to see someone folding it up. It is laughably impractical. It folds into a triangular prism shape, which means not only is it impossible to pocket, but you see people in the video struggling to hold it properly. And I gotta say, the trailer is almost a difficult video to watch, just because you are cringing throughout the whole three and a half minutes, watching these people trying to navigate the complex form factor to perform basic functions, like take a photo. And by the end, it seems like they've given up and they just show somebody using the phone as a plant pot. The second, and I hate to say it, failed concept is the iPhone 2020. This was made by Concepts iPhone and essentially this is your standard iPhone with a display that is 360 degrees. Not to be mistaken with a phone which has a front and a back panel, which we have seen on a couple of 2017 devices, this is one screen that envelops all the way around, which credit where due looks fantastic and this is a really well produced trailer but it's got to be up there with one of the most useless features I've ever seen on a smartphone there is probably no bigger waste of battery than having a screen for which you can only ever see 50% at one time that is constantly on, constantly draining battery life and performance. All right, now onto my favorites. You've probably seen the first one. This is by Sonnet DAG. It was released in 2013 and almost immediately became a huge viral hit. The video has over 40 million views right now. But curiously, whilst the video is titled iPhone 6 to 7, it was actually released just after the iPhone 5 and before the 5S. So I think he or she might have changed the title a couple of years later just to keep catching search traffic. Okay, but the main point of this is that just by pressing one application on the iPhone, it completely changes. It looks like something out of a Transformers movie and you see a projector, super high resolution by the way, projecting a keyboard up in front. And on the rear, it projects what looks like a Mac style interface. Now, clearly this concept is filled with a lot of wishful thinking. I mean, those are some of the best looking projectors I've seen full stop, let alone packed into a smartphone. But at the same time, what makes such a great concept is that this is potentially something that could be done. We have seen projectors getting better and better built into phones. And we have seen phones that can produce computer-like interfaces, for example, the Huawei Mate 10, for example, the Samsung Galaxy Note 8. So it's far-fetched, but at the same time, it's plausible. I like it. Number two is the Nokia Morph, and this was released back in 2008. So for a lot of people, this was their first glimpse into the idea of a foldable phone. And this was a concept that really did it all. It was like Nokia's way of saying, hey, look, everyone, this is all the stuff we are working on or have plans to work on. So make sure you invest more in our company. Having said that, it was a really well-made video with some really smart ideas. It shows a nanomaterial construction which allows the phone to fast charge just using sunlight. And we've also got transparent electronics. So I think it'll be quite some time before we get a transparent battery. But that is the idea that it's showing. The Nokia Morph also showed off haptic feedback on the display, as well as a super hydrophobic coating, which basically made the phone very much waterproof. But interestingly enough, these two things are features we actually see on modern day smartphones. So 10 years after this was released, which at the time looked almost like a sci-fi movie, we've seen some of those features. That's kind of a cool thing. We've then got Samsung's iconic 2014 CES showcase. And you've almost definitely seen this video doing the rounds. It shows a guy in a bar who basically impresses a girl using his foldable display smartphone, which some people found kind of lame, but at the same time, the possibilities here are really quite fantastic. It shows a foldable smartphone concept with a much more seamless transition between the two forms than any current generation device can offer. And the fold is occurring along the display itself, which is something Samsung has been working on for years now, not the same as what ZTE is doing, where the phone is simply folding along a hinge. And I think this one is particularly exciting because as we move into 2018, people are getting very excited for the Galaxy X. And the current rumors are suggesting the Galaxy X is basically going to be based off the concept we saw in this video. Now, one phone that may well have slipped under your radar is the ZTE Eco Mobius. 
Now this arrived at a similar time to Google's Project Aura, or at least when that project started getting more serious, and it was well timed because this was also a modular smartphone. You could swap out the RAM, the CPU, the GPU, even the camera module, and the phone managed to do this whilst looking badass, probably the best looking modular phone concept I've seen, and also retaining a similar form factor and thickness to a non-modular phone. The idea at least was really good news for consumers, being able to upgrade your camera module, being able to swap out your battery for a larger capacity one, being able to keep your phone running fast by getting the latest and greatest processor, or without swapping the phone out entirely. We've then got Microsoft's 2011 Future Productivity Vision, which shows a smartphone which basically is 100% display on the front, but it's about a little bit more than that. It's about how it plans to use connected devices all around you in your life, with the smartphone being the centerpiece. It shows how the phone is gonna communicate with the TV, with your full-scale PC, as well as even what appears to be some sort of electronic book. The video doesn't really have one particular core focus, but it's a really interesting broad showcase of the general tech that we can look forward to. Then we've got my favorite. This phone looks very much like an iPhone 6S, which makes sense because this concept came out just before the iPhone 7, but it has a curved display which to be honest looks right at home on the iPhones. I almost think that should be the direction Apple goes in with its standard iPhone models, but there's more. The display does something you've probably never seen before. With an almost conveyor belt-like functionality, the 4.7 inch standard display vertical orientation becomes a widescreen landscape viewing experience, probably eight inches in size. The mechanism does look like it would require some pretty advanced flexible screen technology. And when the phone turns around and you look from the rear, you can see this whole conveyor belt system seems to take up most of the internals of the phone with no real space for battery. And of course, powering an eight inch widescreen display, battery is one thing you're probably gonna be running out of. So again, this is one of those examples that is not practical, but it's such a cool idea. It looks fantastic, it's really out the box, but at the same time, in some capacity, it is a plausible concept. All right, so as I said, this video was sponsored by Skillshare. Now, this is basically an online learning community. It's got more than 17,000 classes in design, photo, and more. The premium membership gives you unlimited access to the high quality classes from experts in their fields, so you can improve your skills, unlock new opportunities, and do the work you love. For example, I tried the DSLR photography class, and through watching this series of videos, I learned how to better frame my photos, as well as adjust exposure to get the right shot. It's also not an expensive service. You can get it for $10 a month if you get an annual subscription and the first three months for 99 cents. Anyway guys, the link is in the description below, so be sure to check it out. My name is Aaron, this is Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'm signing out.